Tomorrow, though, Justin Trudeau will do what very few prime ministers have done before, testify before a House of Commons committee. He was called there to answer questions about the We Charity controversy, along with his chief of staff, Katie Telford. Most of the other key players of this controversy have already been in the hot seat, including Finance Minister Bill Morneau and the founders of the charity, the Kielberger brothers. The prime minister will face questions over why his government picked We Charity to administer a program worth hundreds of millions of dollars when it had close ties to his family. So how is he likely preparing and what more could we learn? I want to bring in Jenny Byrne. She's a former deputy chief of staff to Prime Minister Stephen Harper, director of operations and principal secretary for Premier Doug Ford, now principal at Jenny Byrne and Associates. And as well, David Hurley. He's partner in the Gandalf Group and host of a podcast I know you all love, including myself, the Hurley <laughs> Burley. Hey guys, great to see you. You know what? I just got something hey. in my inbox that, I, that I'm going to start the show with before I get into strategy with you and, and I'll get you guys to react because it does uh it, it is sort of a, another layer to this story uh the ndp has received a response I'll, I'll show our viewers we didn't haven't had time to put it on a graphic yet but the ndp has received a response from the ethics commissioner to their request that he expand the scope of his investigation into in particular the finance minister bill morneau who when he testified before the committee, admitted that he had uh, traveled uh, through the charity and reimbursed them for that travel only on the day that he ended up testifying. Altogether, for his family members, it was $41,000. And the response to Charlie Angus, the NDP MP, who requested this expansion of scope, is that, in fact, uh, I'll read it here verbatim. Please note that I have expanded the scope of my examination to include subsection 11.1 of the Act, which prohibits a public office holder or a member of of their family from accepting gifts that may reasonably be seen to have been given to influence the public office holder in the exercise of their official powers, duties, or functions. I will also be looking into, Mario Dion, the Ethics Commissioner, goes on to say whether Mr. Morneau may have contravened Section 23 of the Act by failing to disclose these gifts, which, pursuant to another section, may result in the issuance of an administrative monetary penalty. So bottom line, that's a lot of sort of technical language, but bottom line, the, ex the scope of the investigation by the Ethics Commissioner, per a request from the NDP, ha according to this letter, which they just got and, and forwarded on to me, has been... Uh, expanded. So why don't I start off just with a quick reaction before we get into what I really want to talk to both of you about, which is how the prime minister might be preparing for tomorrow's testimony. David, I'll start with you. Uh, what do you think about, uh, you know, another an another aspect to this investigation? Well, I think that, you know, it's an investigation that's grown a lot of tentacles and um, it's an issue that's grown a lot of tentacles. And this is something that this is a problem because this is something that is not germane to the main issue of how the contract was developed or uh, or delivered, uh, but it is an ethical problem uh, for the government, especially because that's pretty much how the Kielbergers characterized their complimentary trip policy as intended to influence the people who went on them. Uh, so, yeah, I think that I think that's a, one of the ish problems with this issue is that it's not narrowly focused around one thing. It's become about the we charity itself. It's become about the way the the inner circle of the government operates. It's got a lot of aspects to it. This is an unhelpful new one, I would say. Yes. Yeah, that, that's a really good point about how it, it, there's almost so many different tentacles now. It's it started off as one thing and it's morphed into a whole lot of other things. Jenny, what what do you think about this development? Well, I'm, I'm not surprised. It, it was evident. It, like what Bill Morneau did was break the uh, break the law. He broke the public. Uh, he broke the guidelines that, uh, through the uh, Accountability Act. So it's not surprising. I think the next shoe to drop on the Kielbergers, of course, will be the the lobbying act. But this is there's might be a lot of tentacles regarding this, but it continues to go back. We do have a prime minister who has been charged or has been uh, found uh, in breach of the ethics violation violations uh, two other times before, and now him and numerous members of his government are under current investigation for a program that stunk from, from the beginning. I think one of the p most compelling parts of the testimony yesterday was the former chair who was fired in March for simply asking the Kielbergers for financial uh, information about the, uh, about the charity. Uh, and she talked about the dysfunction that was the, uh, what was the charity, what was the dysfunction of the organization, the fact that people were being laid off, and the fact that the government not only sole sourced this contract, uh, they obviously did no due diligence, or if they did, they basically said, we don't care about it. So um, th this this continues to be the story about how Justin Trudeau and Bill Murnau and the Liberal Party of Canada continued uh, continued to go ahead and give a nine bill. 
$900 million contract to be delivered by their friends who were incapable of doing it. The only thing I'm going to say is now that I've seen the contract and it's a contribution agreement, uh, as I'm told very often, it's $500 million and the, the, what, it, what it would have paid we was up to $43.5 million. If it did go up to the $900 million, which you're right, that's how the government classified it, it could have actually been more depending on negotiations for we, depending on negotiations with the public service. But I, I digress because what I do want to talk to both of you about, and I'm hoping that uh, you can kind of remove any partisan leanings and instead I can lean on all your experience advising prime ministers and leaders of political parties. It, David, if you were in the room right now or during today with the prime minister as he prepares for that testimony, what's your key piece of advice to him? I think it I think it boils down to uh, three things, one of which is to keep focused on what is the central allegation here and the one thing that has the potential to be really damaging to the government. The government has drawn a line around this program was generated by the public service and we was chosen to administer the program by the public service. There are at the moment no facts on the public record that contradict that. There's a lot of smoke. There's a lot of reason for people to launch allegations and for more moderate people to have suspicions. But that's the, that, there are no facts that disprove that allegation. And Mr. Trudeau needs to bear in mind, as he does his testimony tomorrow, that that is the central territory to be guarded here. Point number one. Point number two is that... Um, a lot of this issue that isn't about the exact substance of the issue is about the appearances of the issue and the appearances that his government, at a time that's tough for people, that he and his finance minister and people that are close to him hang around with beautiful people and do beautiful things and live a glamorous life. And I think that a lot of humility and humbleness uh, from him tomorrow uh, would be very, very helpful. Um, and uh, the last piece of advice I would give him is don't smirk when you win an exchange. Jenny, I'm going to ask you the exact same question. Uh, if you were in that room and you were advising the prime minister, what is the key piece of advice you'd give him? Well, he he's actually in a pretty good uh, he's in a pretty good position. He is a uh, a very good performer. I've said before he remains the Liberal Party of Canada's uh, best asset, and he has agreed to be in front of committee for an hour, which he actually didn't have to go be in front of committee at all, but because politicians, sitting MPs and senators and legislatures do not do not have to be compelled to go before Parliament. So I agree with David. He has to, he has to be very humble. He's very good at pretending he is. So I, I think that he will actually do well. But it's going to be a very short hour. So you've got um, you've got all the opposition uh, opposition uh, uh, parties and as well as the liberals asking questions so there's not going to be more than one round he just needs to get out of uh, the one hour if I was in the prime minister's office saying get out of the one hour without opening up any more uh, any more details of this program kind of the opposite of what happened with the uh, uh, happened with the uh, with the Kielbergers I think the testimony with uh, with Katie Telford will be much more interesting because she of course is a staffer she can be compelled uh, to come to um, to come to uh, um, uh, to to committee and uh, and has to come back if they ask her to. So let me flip the the question in a way. Then David, uh, we all watched yesterday. Uh, what would your advice be to the opposition? What strategy should they employ when questioning the prime minister? Well, I, it it kind of depends on on what their objective is. I mean, I think that the it. The actual issue itself, as I described earlier, is where's what's the genesis of the program and who who uh, awarded the, the program to the Kielbergers. Um, that's kind of hit a dead end. And I don't know whether it's possible that any new facts will come out about that tomorrow. And if they don't, I don't know where the opposition goes with that. Um, and so then they're left with creating this a uh, large amount of smoke, this large amount of appearances of impropriety, some of which is genuine sloppiness, arrogance, uh, some of which is pretty anodyne, uh, but try to whip it up into something that appears more than it is, unless they can approve uh, the central allegation. But I really think that's kind of dead-ended. Jenny, what about you? What would you be advising the, the opposition? How, how would you advise them, I guess, to approach tomorrow? 
Well, I think for the minimal time they're going to have to question him, there are things uh, that ultimately you want to find out is who's, where does the buck stop? This is all this obviously a colossally dismal program when you actually get down uh, when you actually get down into the uh, into the weeds of the uh, the uh, agreement that they they came forward. So how did this? You've been prime minister for five years now. How could this get through your government with no due diligence? This is this is close to a one billion dollar contract, and and it, it it comes down to how the buck has to stop somewhere. Somewhere and someone has to take responsibility. So is it is it the public service? Is it Ian Shugart who was ultimately responsible for recommending that? Because I feel if the public service had recommended it, I'm assuming that there would be documents to prove that. There would have to be. Uh, and we would have seen those already. And you'd ask, okay, well, uh, the Kielbergers in the agreement, uh, you essentially put the money to a shell company, even though the WE program was the only program apparently in the entire country that could deliver this program. Uh, but in it- Kielbergers uh, don't have anything to do with the allegations. Jenny, the Kielbergers don't have anything to do I'm with talking, the allegation. The allegation okay, is what David, the government David, did. David, David, I am actually talking about the contribution agreement that the government wrote up and signed with the Kielbergers. So I actually think that's exactly what Justin Trudeau needs to answer. This has nothing to do with the Kielbergers. This liberal government uh, put in a contribution agreement that the we to me uh, corporation corporation could draw on the money that was given uh, by the government of Canada to this shell company of a charity and not have to ex explain uh, those expenses uh, back to Canada. That's exactly what was in the contribution agreement. And that's ex exactly what the government of Canada needs to answer for. David, I feel like you want to respond to that. <laughs> I got that sense. Um, you know, I, I, I just feel like that's a, 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 a I, I can hear Jenny's anger and I can hear, I understand the suspicion that people who uh, have a natural inclination to uh, be suspicious of the government would have about this. There's certainly lots that the government uh, has done wrong in this area. I also think, though, that that was the conflation of a lot of things that are not yet proven. Um, David, they may never be David, proven, and at David, the moment are just supposition. David, let him finish. Let David, him finish. Go, go ahead. No, but David, David, what I was talking about is not uh, is not something that hasn't been proven. I'm actually talking about a gov the government of Canada. So in in what I am talking about is a contract that was signed between the We to Me Shell organization and the government of Canada, whose ever signature was on that. Ian Shugart, someone in procurement, Justin Trudeau's, whoever. So what I am talking about uh, that the prime minister Mr. needs to Trager's be asked signature about. signature is on it. Uh, uh, is is not about uh, what uh, the unproven allegations. Uh, I am talking about answers the prime minister has to give about the actual government of Canada agreement that they signed with the We to Me uh, uh, shell company of a charity. Well, the good news is I think our audience just got a preview of what they can expect, uh, not only on the Hurley Burley, but tomorrow night on the Power Panel when both of you will join our other panelists. Right out of that testimony from the Prime Minister, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave it there because I'm out of time, but I'm really looking forward to talking with both of you uh, tomorrow evening. It's going to be a lively night. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Bye. Th thanks so much to David Hurley and Jenny Byrne. I want to recap for you just briefly that breaking news that I delivered off the top of the show, the, the email I got from, uh, or a letter that the NDP received, I should say, Charlie Angus from the Ethics Commissioner, who confirmed on the request that he is expanding the scope of his investigation. We know he was already investigating both the prime minister and the finance minister for their involvement in uh, the decision to award this agreement to We Charity. Uh, the opposition, the NDP, had asked for that investigation to also include what Minister Morano had admitted to the Finance Committee last week, which is that he uh, went on a, uh, uh, some trips, his family went on some trips with We Charity to, I believe, uh, his family at least altogether, and that the value of those was $41,000, which he reimbursed. He, re he didn't uh, he didn't realize he had not reimbursed We Charity for, so he did so on the day of his uh, of his committee appearance. That specifically is now what the ethics commissioner we have just learned is expanding his investigation to include. <laughs> Hi, I'm Vashi Capello's host of Power in Politics. See more of our show by subscribing to the CBC News Channel or click the link for another video.